I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, we've got a good one between the Buffalo Bills and the Houston Texans. With that, let's head over to the space city of Houston. Standing by at NRG Stadium, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, much appreciated, Coach, as we welcome all of you to our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. They do it big here in Houston, and a second ago it was a Texas-sized welcome for their hometown guys. They're fired up and ready to go as they get set to match up with the Buffalo Bills. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. And this is a game where the defenses, they need to be on their toes because you've got quarterbacks here, yes, that can throw the football, but they can also run it very well, too. Mobile quarterbacks. Remember for the longest time, they used to tell the quarterbacks, stay in the pocket. We don't want you outside of it at all. Nowadays, that mobility, truly an asset, and people are game planning for it. As a scout told me recently, we are actually working with what the colleges are giving us nowadays. And we are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. This is taken at his four. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. First carry for Carlos Hyde. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. He'll wind up getting a yard on the game's first play at second down. And let's look here at the Houston offense. With DeAndre Hopkins, I think anyone is calling plays for him has zero limitations. And what I mean by that is, he's a guy you can move outside, you can move him inside, play him on the left side, on the right side. It doesn't matter. Some guys, they have to have the ball in a certain spot, not Hopkins. Long, short, intermediate, he just wants the football. And then after that, he usually does some pretty good damage with run after catch. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Quickly now, a look at the Buffalo defense. Trent Murphy's number one attribute is playing against the run, but he continues to work hard on his pass rush skills. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, Watson. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Watson on first down. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. I like what they tried to do there. They didn't get a completed pass downfield, but they came off a of momentum play. Big time gain on the previous snap. Came right back and threw one deep, hoping to catch him on their heels. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Here's Johnson. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and 10. 
As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Watson, off play action. He finds Hopkins complete. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. DeAndre Hopkins, 47 yards. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. Well, that's how they envisioned it, get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted, was it an audible, or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. That time a six-play drive. And it results in the Texans finding the end zone. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. So here come the Bills on offense for the first time. It's Josh Allen that will be orchestrating the offense, a 6'5 quarterback from Wyoming. now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now the first carry here for Frank Gore. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. But you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Here's Gore now, running out of the gun. And that one blown up quickly, as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. So the shotgun snap to Allen. He may try and run for this. Josh Allen, very athletic at 6'5", showing the versatility, picking up the first on the scramble. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. 41. Here's Allen on first and 10. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. That one was intended for John Brown. And that'll bring up second down. Now let's take a look here at the Bills offense. So let's all work together on this one because it's natural to just watch the football. 
I want all of us to watch the center of this offensive line, the center and the two guards. They've got to be able to control the point of attack, and they didn't do such a good job on that last play. Plenty of opportunities to redeem themselves. They'll have to take advantage of that and start to make progress. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Allen. Man open. That's Robert Foster complete. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 15 yards that time. And a Buffalo first. Looked like man coverage, able to read it there on the outside for the completion. That'll be something to track as the game goes along here. It certainly will, and there's so many different ways that they will try to figure out whether they're in man or zone. Sometimes you'll run a guy in motion to see if someone runs with him. Other times you'll empty out the backfield, spread it out, and see if everyone comes out and matches up. In any event, anytime you see man coverage, you tell your guys, you've got to win those matchups, because if you do, you'll get the football and probably for a nice game. Boy, nowhere to go at all on that first down run as they will get to him behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Play action, Allen. There goes a deep ball, end zone. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. The defensive crew for the Texans. Here's a look. Versatile players on defense are all the rage in the NFL, but it also helps to have a Benardrick McKinney who does one thing very, very well, and that's tackle ball carriers. Big man. Big size inside, looks like a defensive end playing inside linebacker. Still has the ability to run and cut runners off before they can get downfield. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Working out of the shotgun, here's Allen. He's got the connection to Cole Beasley. 16 yards there, and the Bills have a first down. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? first down and he's going to keep it here and he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16 yard line he'll get 10 there all on his own but it'll be second down well he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield waiting for someone to get open but once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush it was time to make a break for it they still need about the length of the football here maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. So they gave up the early touchdown. This has been a pretty good response. Nice drive, taking it down first and goal. And I know all the cliches jump in, right? Don't get away from your game plan too early. Make sure you're settled down. Don't panic. But it's all true, isn't it? Because otherwise, you get out of what you plan to do during the game, and it's still early. Don't get crazy because you gave one up. Just respond as you just noted. And he'll get about four there as he takes it from the 10 down to the six. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yes, now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. To the air. Allen. This is caught. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. From the three now, here they come on third and goal. Three 
Allen going to throw toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. So off goes Allen, and on comes Steven Hauschka for the Buffalo field goal. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. You sound like you're going negative on that, partner. I was. Sounds like, sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. After the main field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Well, they had the touchdown on the opening drive of the ball game. It was countered by just a field goal. So, hey, if your guys can do that for four quarters, you're in good shape. Yeah, it is a team game, so that's just good complimentary football. But, you know, I know I'm no brainiac, but you trade sixes for threes, things are going to work out in your favor. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 26. They begin the drive with Johnson. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. What happened there? Was that just a missed assignment on the O-line? It certainly felt like it, but also the speed of the play. When you talk about defensive end, they want to be ahead of the clock, don't they? They want to be upfield, making plays on every snap. How about his agility there to run that one down? A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. From the gun, here's Watson. And this would complete to Will Fuller. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. First down, Hyde, and he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 46. Now it's Watson, a bootleg. He'll buy some time right. He'll try and run it. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it and picking up a first down. Now this play was all about the eyes. As he rolled out to his right, he kept one eye downfield and one eye on what was in front of him, and he ended up picking up some pretty good yardage. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now Watson. Escaping the pressure right. He's going to take off with it. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. 
Partner, it's often the man coverage is easier for a quarterback to run against. You get your receivers going downfield, those guys are staying with them, and oftentimes they have their back to the quarterback, which opens up a lot of space and room, and they don't even know that he's taken off with it. What a big-time pickup on that play. First and ten, Watson, and he's got it, and he's in, touchdown, Houston. Two first quarter touchdown passes now for Deshaun Watson, and the Texans push further out in front. Certainly there are good things about quick strike offenses that score fast, but a long drive can also work to your advantage as well. In so many ways, Brandon, because number one, you get them tired, but the big one is mentally. They can't figure out how to slow you down, how to get off the field, how to get the ball back. They go to the bench wondering, what are we going to do next time in order to stop those guys? On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. This one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So the drive there took six plays, and the result, a Houston touchdown. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Allen and the Bills now with a first and ten at their 25-yard yard line from the gun it's Allen and he finds Tyler Croft and he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32 we've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter haven't we we have and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because number one you throw the short game until they stop it and if they're not going to stop you keep throwing it and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Ten yards, good enough for a Buffalo first down. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. 41. Check, check, check 41. They're not ready for this, man. Gore again here on first down. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Okay, just like that, just like that. Now a delayed give to Gore. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind a line of scrimmage. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that's going to make it third down and ten. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is a well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Hey, come on. 
Throwing is Allen on third. And the throw there going to be incomplete. It went with the dime look that time on defense. Just flooded the field with defensive backs. Blanketed everyone. Took away all the passing angles. Thus, the incompletion. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. DeAndre Carter is deep for the Texans. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked out and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. And now out comes Houston. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. They turn to the fullback, Gillespie. And he's able to get this across the 10 before being taken down. 10 yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. I know a lot of times we like to put players in certain boxes. He does this and he does that. But this guy, he can do a little bit of everything. He's not just a lead blocker or a guy who protects the passer. Handing the ball, he might want to get out of the way. So a little more space to operate now. First and 10 from right around the 12. On the counter, this is high. And brought down, but not before reaching the 25. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. And that's the big fella's MO right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the gun, a run for Johnson. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well. But when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. From the 27, Watson. It's complete to Hopkins. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. How about the first quarter he's putting together out wide? Pretty impressive. I think that he likes the fact that we're playing this as a day game. You know, some guys, they respond better in the evenings. For some reason, it builds up. For this guy, day game, and he is off and running. You're exactly right. 100 might be conservative with the start that he's had here in the first he, quarter. Yeah, by the numbers, he's on pace for 200-plus right now. Watson now already over 100 yards passing in this first quarter. It's first and 10. High. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now a run with high. And a good pickup there. He gets about six up to midfield. 
Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. He can run for it, and he will. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. He'll wind up getting two there as he does it himself and picks up the first. And what a weapon to have when you can use your quarterback as a short yardage runner and pick up first downs. First down, a run with Hyde. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. After one, a 14 to three ball game. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They'll try the air now with Watson. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, help force the incompletion. Yeah, but had his hands on it for a second. Would have been a tough catch, though. Falls incomplete. Throwing on third down, Watson. And an alley to run. He may try and run for this. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own, but as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you, and if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This will be from 56 yards out. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot, and this score will stay right where it is. It was a kicker from that distance, 56, 57 yards. So many things you got to worry about, but I am a little surprised he didn't get it there. Yeah, with the way kickers are nowadays, we're surprised anything under 65 that it doesn't get at least to the crossbar. But remember this, you have to drive it a little bit lower in order yeah. to make that distance, and you also have to be worried about the interior rush that they can get their hands on it. So that's why those stronger kickers nowadays who can pop it up in the air and still travel and carry it, that's what you're looking for. So the missed 56 yarder, and now the flip side. Good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. Throwing on first down is Allen. And this one caught by Beasley. And he'll be brought down at the 48 yard line. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now Gore. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. The Bills on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. 
Here's Allen to throw it. And able to find John Brown. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 10 yards, good enough for a Buffalo first down. now six of ten in this first town he's got his guys a first down here check, check. Press, yes. Press. all that and it only nets him a yard it's second down never make the mistake that the slot receivers especially the little guys like we're watching here are just quicker than fast a lot of them combine quickness and speed and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there On second and nine, Allen, and the grab by Croft. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted three out of five thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Now Allen, and that's complete to Croft. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route, but he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Back to the ground game here. Gore. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Brandon, that play certainly felt like what I call a tendency breaker. First and 10, they dial up a draw play. That's not a normal situation, but give credit to the defense. They weren't fooled at all and really finished off the play. By round 80! Right there, Watch the screen, watch the screen! Watch the screen, watch the screen! And done. On second and 11 now, Allen. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 13-yard line. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. They'll run on first down. Gore trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Tackle made by Whitney Merciless. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. Looking to throw on second down. Allen, now they go screen, it's complete. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown from 13 yards out as his guys are back within a single score. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Yeah, you're so right because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. Steven Hauschka for the point after. And he's got it, that cuts the lead. It's now 14 to 10. A 10 play drive that time. And it ends in a Buffalo touchdown.
Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. Fielded about a yard deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. DeAndre Hopkins and the rest of the offense heading back onto the field. He's already approaching 100 yards and has the touchdown, I'm sure, on that opposite sideline right now. They're scratching their heads saying, all right, what do we do? And the hard part is, even if you limit him to a short catch, he has that make-you-miss ability right. to take it for big yardage and put in the end zone again. So trying to blanket him is very difficult, but ultimately, you've got to find a way to put him on the ground, tackle him, and he doesn't make that easy. And they're struggling with that so far. They start the drive with Hyde. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Watson. And the catch made by Hopkins. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out, to the sideline, and make a catch. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Out of the gun, Watson. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. On second down now, it's Johnson. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. Hey, tight, tight down, tight down, there you go. Here's Hyde on the draw. And he'll take it across midfield and into Buffalo territory. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Watson now to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. The Texans on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and six. A shotgun snap for Watson. And that is incomplete. And I feel like my man, Old Mo, momentum might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? They scored a touchdown their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. On is the punter, Brian Anger, to kick this one away. Back deep here, Andre Roberts. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And our focus now shifts to Frank Gore. He's had a good chunk of carries. Problem is for very little success. I don't want to put it all on his shoulders, but that's a big reason they're losing right now. Have to be very careful that he doesn't start pointing fingers. Offensive line obviously trying. The defense is doing a nice job against him today. When it's all said and done, it's all about the guy in the mirror. He has to get it done better going forward. See if he can look and do some soul searching now. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 21. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And he finds Beasley complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 
The end result, 21 yards. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. And here's carry number 10 for Frank Gore. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stop that one for a short game. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Here we go, D. Now on second down, this is Gore. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Bills on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This time it's third and three. They'll run a draw now with Singletary. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. Partner, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory, right at the 40. And now they'll throw with Allen, throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Cole Beasley, the intended target, and now it's second down. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, yeah, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Maybe a little over-anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. Wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. They'll roll him out right. He can run for it, and he will. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Normally we're talking about a quarterback duel where they're matching each other pass for pass. How about the footwork in this one? Both of these guys running the ball well. Yeah, they've mixed in the run game. You're exactly right. Now, both coaches might not like how much their quarterbacks <laughs> have taken off, but another example right there of just good mobility. Operating from the red zone now. Allen. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. They run. It's Gore. And a nice pick up there as he'll take it from the 10 down to the 5-yard line. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Bills on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. They're up against a third and one situation. Here's Allen. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. A five-yard touchdown. And the Bills have taken the lead. Well, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown.
Here's Hauschka for the extra point. It's good, and they'll take a 17-14 lead. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive, and it culminates in a Bills touchdown. now to send this one away following the score. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now Carlos Hyde gears up to take the field again. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore. Or they get tired or they get out of position or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. That's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards it. Give them 17 on the pick up there, and the Texans also get a new set of downs. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. On first down, Watson. He's got his tight end. It's Fells. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Eight more yards this time coming off back-to-back -back first down pickups. A reminder coming up here at halftime. We'll ship you off to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman will have first half highlights and analysis from a back and forth first half that we've seen. Now Watson's throw is taken in by QT. Six yards to pick up and that's a first down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Watson in the offense going to come up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Throwing again on second down. Watson. Open man is QT complete. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Oh, it's a nickel set here defensively on third and inches. Still want to be prepared for a pass. From the gun, here's Watson. And this is going to be incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? 
They decide to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And that will tie things at 17-all. So he gets a shot at atoning for the earlier miss here in the first half and able to knock it through. And what a relief for him, don't you think? Because how many games have we done where kickers missed one early and never got a chance to atone for it the rest of the game? That's a lot to carry around. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as it kicks away. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Let's go! Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. You got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You could never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. Mike Panini! Here's Allen on first and ten. Allen hit. He lost the football. And the Texans scoop it. The big fella. And they will bring this one back. A fumble return for a Texans touchdown. So the big fella gets on the scoreboard with a return for a touchdown. Good thing he didn't have to go too far, though. You know the trainers were very happy about that. Imagine having to go get him in the end zone, escort him to the bench, and give him the oxygen. They were loving the fact that he got in without having to run very far. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. So not only the cough-up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score this one taken from the seven and he'll be taken down just past the 20 at about the 21 yard line here's the buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here and let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive a few moments ago they were in the exact situation but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six yeah you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the nfl you gotta remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it but you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it and that's what you don't want to do First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. Got an open man. It's Foster. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. 12 yards that time, and a Bills first down. 
Well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Allen now on first down. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Uh, CD, with that incompletion, let's look at some of the big games week 13. So these are ones that our crew probably think of the biggest four. Let's rank them one to four as far as how big they are and what they mean. Baltimore at Buffalo, San Fran at New Orleans, KC at New England, Seattle at the Rams. How would you rank those? What do you think? Well, this is going to sound self-serving since I'm working San Francisco at New Orleans, but to me that's the number one game because the number one seed in the NFC will be determined that week for that moment, mm -hmm. okay? The winner of that becomes the number one seed. I think the number two game, Seattle at the Rams. Because Seattle's trying to maintain pace with San Francisco or become the number one team in the NFC West. And the Rams have to have it if they have any designs on making the playoffs. The number three game, Baltimore at Buffalo. Buffalo has announced its presence, that big win on Thanksgiving Day over Dallas. But Baltimore is the hottest team, the best team in the league over the last eight weeks. And then you finish up Kansas City, New England. How is that the number four game? I know. Hard to believe, but it is in this day, in this instance. First down, Allen. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, partner, Thanksgiving in the rearview mirror, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all gone. And now if you look at the top four seeds right now as we hit, is it the quarter pole or the three-quarter pole? It is the quarter pole. And we get to thank our NFL reporter, Randy Moss, who also has a great background in the sport of Kings for letting us know that's one of the most misused terms in that sport. It is the quarter pole, right? What are they headed for the home stretch? Is what he also said about it. I can't wait to see how this thing ends. Well, we got New England and Baltimore, the top two seeds in the AFC, Seattle and New Orleans in the NFC. You think it stays that way at the end? I think it's going to be a heck of a battle. I think Baltimore, yes. New England's going to get a battle from Buffalo, but I think they're going to stay in the spot. Seattle, they're going to battle San Francisco. They're just going to trade it back and forth, and it's going to come down to week 17, I believe, to decide that one. And New Orleans, yes, they will retain a top two spot. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Working out of the shotgun, here's Allen. Short throw hauled in by Croft. And they'll get this one to about the 20 yard line. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left hash, this from 37. Hauschka's kick is good, and the drive will wind up yielding three. So yes, they'll still be down going into intermission, but the deficit is now made even smaller, very manageable. Yeah, and if nothing haywire happens here in his last couple of precious seconds, they will go into the locker room with a nice bounce in their step, having gotten a little bit closer on the scoreboard. Now after the main field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Time for a final kneel down or a safe run, and then they can head to the locker room with a lead. Yeah, or they can even run a screen. You know, something they feel is somewhat safe 
that might actually pop and turn into a big play, that's what you usually run in this situation. Or go four verticals because why not? Because you're feeling it, right? <laughs> you're just feeling it. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Back and forth, we went in that first half. This has certainly been an entertaining one to watch thus far. So let's get right back out to it as we'll rejoin our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both these offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Bills now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Allen going to throw, and his throw here is incomplete. With that incompletion, I want to revisit some playoff talk. We talked about the top two seeds, but let's break down the AFC playoff picture. Ravens and Pats on top. If the season ended, we'd be looking at the Bills in the five spot and the Steelers the six. That would give us wild card games of Bills, Chiefs, Steelers, Texans. You give the Titans, Raiders, Colts, or Browns any shot, Charles? I give the Titans a shot. They get Houston twice in the last four games of the year. And the way they're running the ball with Derrick Henry and their defense playing well, yeah, they're very confident right now. The Raiders, no, I don't give them that type of a shot. I think they're a year ahead of schedule with the season that they're having. The Colts, I do give them a shot. Okay, Jacoby Brissett, if he can get hot down the stretch and they get Marlon Mack back running the football, I think they can have an impact. In Cleveland, no, I don't give them any shot. To the air, Allen. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Here's the Texans offense now, Redding for their first possession of the second half. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. They always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to. And if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. And he'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now left side on the swing pass. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. So first and 10 now from the 30. Come on, baby, come on, baby. Woo! Go. 
They give to Johnson going right. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. And plays like that are exactly what this defense needs here early in the second half to give it a little spark. I think their halftime adjustments, what they talked about, maybe it was just a little inspirational speech. Who knows? But looks like they're ready to go. Now on second and 13, Watson, open man, the tight end fouls. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter, it's a good running back dive play. 50 or set, 19! They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. And that will be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Kaimi Fairbear now to attempt the Texan field goal. This is a 49-yard attempt, right hash. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle, and that'll make this a seven-point game. So a good snap, good hold, and right down the middle. Never in doubt, just the way you used to hit them, partner. You mean like uh, kicking the ball? Exactly. Well, that was in high school. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't care what level. You hit them, they go through. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Here comes Josh Allen and the Bills offense back onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They'll try and start the drive here with Gore. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. From the 30 on second down, Allen. He's going deep for Brown. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. You know they wanted, you know they expected. They needed him to be sharp coming out after the half. Unfortunately, he's missed his first three throws. I wonder if he got out late and missed his warm-up time. The whole team did come out a little bit later than usual. I don't know, maybe there's something to that. It must have been a heck of a halftime speech. Yeah, maybe just trying to rally the troops back from this deficit. Throwing now is Allen. Open man here is Foster. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 14 yards, and the Bills will get a new set of downs. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Throwing on first down is Allen. And he's going to have the connection to Foster. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. 
all that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. To throw again on second down. Allen, and the grab by Croft. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. It's a pickup of 17 on that one, and a Bills first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Allen now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and 10. Back to the workhorse today, it's Gore. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. That second down play, that's a minus four. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool him, right? Tried to trick him, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. From the gun, it's Allen. Sliding, and he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. The Bills send the punter out as he's on to kick it away. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, Touchdowns. Here's Hyde as they begin on the ground. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 10 yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because in a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So first and 10 now from the 30. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. No luck whatsoever there on the draw. Yeah, they're supposed to use their aggressiveness against them. That was the hope. But maybe they had too big of a meal last night. A half step slow, and he ends up running right into the meat of the defense. Throwing on second down. Watson. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. 
Tredavious White with a pick, and they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. Let's get this. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. 319! So after the INT, it's Allen rolling to his right. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir, able to turn that into a positive game. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. Not much there, maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again, go play action, hit them over the top. Allen from the gun on third down. He may try and run for this. Eight yards that time, able to take off, and the result is a first down. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy, make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play, a perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. Allen now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Here's Gore. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. They'll stick to the ground game with Gore. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. Now at third and two, they're going to elect to throw with Allen. And the throw there going to be incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. They'll spot it at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. And Hauschka's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. He's got nine points on field goals now. He's made three of them. That gets him a bit closer, but there's no question they need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And for him, it's not his concern, right? He just goes out there when they call on him and goes ahead and puts points up on the board. But the offense has got to get together and figure out what's stalling their drives so they have to keep calling on him. Now, after 
after the made field goal. Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And here comes the Texans now. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10, just shy of the 30. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there, almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Well, CD, earlier we looked at the AFC playoff picture. Let's quickly peek at what's going on in the NFC right now. We mentioned Seattle and New Orleans would get the buys if the season ended today. The matchups, though, first round wild card weekend would be San Fran and Dallas and Minnesota and Green Bay. I smell ratings, my friend. <laughs> Big time ratings. Let's start with Minnesota and Green Bay because that would be their third meeting of the year as they are division rivals in the NFC North. And of course, going to Lambeau anytime after October 15. It's dicey with weather, so you don't know what you're going to get. Minnesota now a dome team. How about San Francisco at Dallas? You could potentially have a San Francisco team with 12 or more wins going on the road to take on a division champ, the NFC East, Dallas. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Trent Murphy drops him for a four-yard loss there, and that brings up fourth down. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. Here's Brian Anger now, as he's on to punt for Houston. And this is away, it's a high kick, and he got all of it. To return is Roberts. Nice job bringing that one back, 14 on the return. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. He's going deep for Brown, and that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. And here's Allen. Going to throw again. And he finds Beasley complete. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. So the shotgun snap to Allen, and able to find John Brown. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 14 yards, and the Bills will get a new set of downs. A 
On first down, it's goal. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. Outside. Defense. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. Following the penalty, it's first and five, and you got to think offensively, all kinds of options. Following the penalty, it's Gore. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. If you're looking for glory, looking to get your name in the headlines, you do not want to play nose tackle. But how about what we just saw there? The ability to hold people up, take on extra blocks, and actually slip them and make a tackle on that play. That's big time. From the 44, Allen. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 34-yard line. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now Allen. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. That last catch short the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Allen going to give this one to Singletary. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Allen now from the gun. He'll throw. He's going to. And this is caught for a Bills touchdown. Robert Foster, 28 yards. And the Bills have retaken the lead. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. Hauschka with the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays, and it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. get out to send this one away following the score this is taken at the three then he'll take this across the 25 couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line getting set to go again DeAndre Hopkins marches back onto the field pretty good game for him so far I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game but so far he's been solid I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good 
but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once. But boy, he can explode at any moment. Yeah, and when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, make, you do. You get you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. Attempt carry for Hyde. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. From the 29, Watson. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. To throw is Watson. Got an open man. It's QT. A big play there on the catch and run. 59 yards. Excellent execution. And now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone. I wonder what the next play call is going to be. Because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. They run high. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Give him maybe a yard, quite the opposite from the previous big gainer. That was a really nice play, being able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. On second down, Johnson. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. The Texans on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, Watson. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Duke Johnson. There to make the grab. And the Texans have once again taken the lead. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing going three wide is a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that will make this a four-point game. A drive that time of six plays. And it results in the Texans finding the end zone.
So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. This is taken at his four. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 24. From the gun, Allen. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. I'm darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Throwing again, Allen. They'll try and set up the screen, it's complete. And he'll be brought down on the 30 yard line after a gain of six. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid gain. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. Now Allen to throw. Operating from the gun. And that is incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Well, the Bills send the punter out as he'll come on to kick this one away. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted. Spotted at the 14-yard line. And the Texans set to come onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Looking to throw again on second down. Watson, he finds Hopkins complete. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. On first down. Hi, and I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. A loss of two there, second down. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it could be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good plays and slow them down. On second down, it's Johnson, and he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Makes it third and four. The Texans on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third and four. 
A shotgun snap for Watson. And this is going to be incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for Houston. Good open field tackling there. A 50-yard punt followed by just a one-yard return. And the Bills will be backed up to start the drive. They'll have it first and ten. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Allen now looks to throw. Got him in. It's Brown. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. A gain there of 21 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Allen. From the gun, he'll throw. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. On second and 10. Allen, short throw hauled in by Croft. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. Again, they'll throw with Allen. And that's caught by Beasley. 16 yards there, and the Bills have a first down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory, right at the 40. Play action, now it's Allen. Nowhere to escape and he goes down. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. So after the sack here, second and 14. To throw, it's Allen. Got an open man, it's Foster. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans 26. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Go, 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 go. 
Allen going to come to the line here, first and ten. And he's five for six now, throwing the ball on this drive. Here's Allen, and this one caught by Beasley. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 14 yards, and the Bills will get a new set of downs. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Here's Allen on first and 10. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right of the yard. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. And again, it's Allen. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Allen looks to throw on third and one. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. They'll run it with Gore. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. So the decision to go for it turns out to be a good one. They get a couple of yards, and as a result, the drive keeps moving. It's now first and goal. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Allen. Touchdown, Buffalo. Now, let's not forget that was all set up by the fourth down conversion earlier in the drive. Would have been a complete letdown if the drive doesn't culminate this way, wouldn't it? If you're going to go for it on fourth down, your intention is to make sure you get a touchdown out of the drive, and that's exactly what they did. Converted, and then converted a second time for six points. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. So that drive spans 13 plays, and it was Josh Allen using his legs to polish things off. Houshkin now to send this one away following the score. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And let's look at Carlos Hyde now. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him, maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. 
I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. Don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Move it around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead. Right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, they're off. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Back to back good plays, have them on the move on first down. Let's see what you got. From the gun, here's Watson. He finds his man, Johnson. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Back to throw, Watson. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Boom! Big hit! All day! Sack C! You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Watson underneath for Johnson. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and that'll bring up fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Brian Anger now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. A little less than four minutes remaining, and the margin for error is small with this slim lead. Operate within your four-minute offense here, Charles? Definitely. Remember, the four-minute offense doesn't always correspond to what's up on the clock. What they need to do is play a little bit of keep away right now run the clock down, make sure their opponent doesn't get the ball back. Their dream scenario, get enough first downs and make them yeet up their timeouts so the game ends when you're kneeling down with the football. Now a throw over the middle and he's got it to start the drive. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. 
Here's Gore now, running out of the gun. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And, and there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Has to. You said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. Here we go. Third and one. Gut check time on both sides. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Bills football here as we get you reset. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. Another carry now for Gore. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. We got three, we got three, we got Gore. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. To throw is Allen. And the grab by Croft. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Uh, here's a first and 10 at the 38. On the counter, Gore. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. Again they run, again it's goal. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And they're going to have a third down. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because... We've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. How about in the NFL? The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. Allen down to a knee and that should just about do it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. So it's a victory here for the Buffalo Bills. And I tell you, this was a fun one. Just a close game. Nothing comes easy in this league, as you know. They had to work for that victory. I've got to go back to what you just said. Nothing comes easy in this league. How many times have we talked to coaches prior to a game and assessed, you know, the strengths, the weaknesses, the whole deal? Even in games when one coach was a decided favorite, what do they always say to us? But you do know, this is really a seven-point league. Seven points either way usually decides a ball game. We had exactly that in this one. And not only that, but this is a gutsy road victory, one they can hang their hat on. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. So long from Houston.